Hi guys and uh, welcome to my review for the Zetian Wu, the Heyday edition. This is the collaboration between uh, Tang Zhu and uh, HPB, um, and, and well, it's been uh, it's been in the talk uh, for a couple of weeks now with uh, what has been changed, what hasn't been changed, should the name have been different, uh, is it really a, a real big improvement over the original, isn't it a big improvement, is it the same driver, is it not the same driver, I mean it's it's been object of a, of a bit of a, of a, of a talk, um, and uh, well, uh, to cut a long story short, yes, it's an improvement, it's, it's a real improvement, anyway, let me... Let me um, go through the box first, and uh, and then we'll get into actually talking about it in more detail and so on. Box the usual tanks presentation that they've gotten us accustomed to. These nice uh, drawings. I mean, really, tanks in that department needs no. Uh, they need no correction. They're doing everything properly. So remove the sleeve, and then open up like in a book style. Okay. We greet it up with the paperwork here. The actual box comes over here. And this is actually underneath. So the IEMs come over there. Underneath we have this array of, of tips. Uh, I'm actually using the, the balanced uh, large size ones. As you can see, there's also some base, enha base enhanced ones, which are basically narrow bore. That's a little bit wider bore. This is a narrow bore. And then some foams, which um, they actually, well, they look like medium size to me. Anyway, that's it. So, nice enough tips. The box I'll show to you now. Let me just put this away. So, that's it. The box is the box uh, like the one, like the original one. Okay. Just that they've changed the color. Uh, and actually, uh, it, it gives it a nicer, uh, more premium look. This, this black tonality. Uh, I mean, I've actually got yeah, the original as well. I don't know what it is, but it just looks... It's not that it doesn't look good. It looks good, but looks... Maybe because this is not, not in, in, engraved like it is here. Maybe just printed on. It just feels a little bit cheaper over here. And while here, it, it does convey a, a nice sense of class, of, of being a premium product. Anyway, inside there, the IEMs obviously sit over here and then cable is wound up around and, and that's it so no real need to get too elaborate about that um okay the iems themselves let's let's talk about them um first thing worth mentioning is the cable uh, and very nice cable um honestly one of the nicer cables that i've seen coming in a stock uh, or from 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 factory really nice very nice hardware it's modular cable as you can see that's why i've got here the other termination 3.5 and the 2.5 i'm using the 4.4 as you can see but very nice cable it's got and it just feels good in the hand the original one which i've got here the original was etienne already had a very similar kind of cable um, but this one is just taking it to another level, and, and honestly, the match, the color, the way that it's ma it matches the, the, the redesigned shell, it, it looks really, really good. Anyway, let me put that away over there, and so that we can talk into a little bit more detail. All right, here they are, the heydays, and they seem. Uh, physically the same as the original and they are the difference is that the nut the shell is a full metal shell full alloy shell okay i've actually got the original over here let's pick the same side so that we have no doubts that we are okay so right side and right side so exactly the same faceplate as you can see I honestly do not see any difference in size or anything. Same thing. From the side, again, I do I do not see any difference. Exactly the same thing. Just that this one is a resin and this is metal. Okay. Length of the nozzles, everything is exactly the same. Exactly. Okay. Yes, the original you could see straight away the filter there. On this one, 
you see the, the, the protective grill, the filter is uh, underneath. But they've all got, uh, it, it's, it's the same thing. It's the exact same shell. Okay, that's it. All right. Uh, being the same shell, it uh, also has the, the, the benefits that the original one has, which is a very nice fit, at least in my ears. I've got absolutely no complaints. It fits flawlessly in my ears, isolates beautifully, non-fatiguing, although it's a metal shell, it's not heavy, so it's non-fatiguing to wear. Absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure. And the look and, and the feel of the whole IM is very premium, very, very premium. Uh, it, it's, you know... Um, no way uh, does it uh, um, transmit that it's an IM of uh, $200. No, it transmits that it's an IM way more expensive than that. Okay. So, as I said, I'm using the the uh, standard uh, or supplied uh, wide bore large size tips. Just here to go, so you guys can see the one difference that does exist here, which I actually was neglecting to mention, is this, which is. If you notice on the original, there's one hole over there. On this one, two holes. So that is a sign that the tuning has been slightly changed. And yes, the tuning has been changed. And it has been changed uh, to the better. It's been improved. And by saying that, what am I trying to say? Or what am I going to say? Or what do I mean by it? Okay. For me, for me personally, uh, there were, well, there are uh, uh, all of the uh, all of the uh, planar uh, drivers or uh, earphones have got their pluses and negatives and and the, the, and the, the, the evolution that we've uh, witnessed over the last year year and a bit in in the planar segment has been tremendous uh, and you know again I have to. Uh, remind myself and, and remind us all that we owe it to 7 Hertz. They were the ones that began all of this. And without them, we, we probably wouldn't be here. Or maybe we would have also uh, eventually have be, had uh, or would be living a revolution of planars, but in a different way. They really um, are the ones that began this whole thing. And to a certain extent, um, it's a pity that they haven't been able to uh, evolve... Uh, maybe as well as some of the other brother, uh, brother, other brands have. But anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, and out of all of the planners that have come out and so on and so forth, the P1 Max has always been a favorite of mine. Um, its flaw was really only the fact that it needed power, like all planners actually do. Okay, uh, but otherwise, I just loved its neutral. The, neutral, the neutrality of its tuning, which was way more engaging, and way more energetic than what you would think. As long as you gave it power, the P1 Max never, never disappointed me. Um, in terms of its tonality uh, and timbre, that was the other thing that I loved the P1 for, and its overall technicalities were also very, very good. The, the S12, uh, the Electro S12, uh, which I've got the S12 Pro here, um, the original, uh, comparatively, was just a little bit more high energy uh, in the upper mids and presence and so travel area, um, and by and by being more energetic, it uh, let uh, itself more more uh, more prone to showing off its BA timbre, which there's nothing wrong or BA timbre. It's excuse me, it's it's uh, planar timbre and tonality, which there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes, sometimes there would be occasions where that sheen could um, be just to the, to the dislike of certain people. Personally, it never bothered me. It never really bothered me. The S12, uh, I, th I think it's is, is again one of the IEMs that we owe a lot of what we are living to because it took the formula of the uh, Timeless and improved upon it. Um, better shell, slightly better tuning, and absolute monster in terms of bass. Um, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a particular version of the S12 uh, done by Michael Bruce, which is the Prometheus. Absolute beast of an IEM. It's, it's one IEM that I, I actually... It's a pity that it doesn't get produced by a lecturer because uh, if they were to do it, I'm absolutely positive that it would be a success. Let's, 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 let's keep it at that. 
anyway so the p1 top 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 and then it was joined by the uh, original Buzetian to become my two these were my two go to go to uh, wrecks for planars that doesn't mean that the likes of the hook kicks wasn't good it just i just was more satisfied by the performance of the Buzetian and the performance of the p1 and now recently recently um uh, the S12 came out, Pro, and the F1 uh, from from SHTK. The S12 Pro, contrary to what uh, has been said by uh, some other people, um, and even let sure themselves to a certain extent, I've got two S12 Pros, two S12 Pros compared to the three st uh, standard original S12s. They are all graphed with less mids and less treble, so they became more balanced, more coherent, m nicer sounding, not as edgy when really pushed. So for me personally, the S12 Pro is a valid alternative to the original S12, okay? And the F1 was an IM that uh, really just surprised me. It was, and it is basically, basically in essence, the same thing as the S12 Pro in its overall presentation. Bass, mids, treble, technicalities everything everything very similar so i've set basically the stage this was my reference this was my reference those two are now later ones that have come into the whole equation which are possible rec recommendations over these two but these two have always been uh, the one the two planars that i set myself or i, I would wreck um so when talk of the heyday came out i was like how are you going to improve upon it? And then when uh, the, the, the first uh, more concrete uh, uh, notions about it being having less bass, which was kind of a, like a surprise because HPB is known for being a man that likes his bass. So it's got less bass, less treble. So it's going more neutral. It's going more, more relaxed. Okay, let's see how that works out. And to cut a very long story short, it worked out amazing. And what do I mean by that? Basically, everything that you could possibly think in a positive manner about the original Wuzetian has been polished up with the heyday. If the technicalities there were good and were, you know, soundstage, imaging, timbre, tonality was perfect, uh, and there's a reason for that, in my opinion, over here they've been polished and taken up a notch. Well, taken up two notches, actually, and two big notches. Um, I think to a, a, a big extent, the, the success of the Wuzetian, in my opinion, is the fact that it uh, was tuned uh, with, the, with following the idea of a DD. And some people kind of went against that and thought, oh, but if you're tuning it like a DD, you're taking away the planar characteristics and this and that. And mm -mm -mm. Fine, I can understand where they're coming from. But at the same time, um, it all depends on how far you take it. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, case in point, for example, the Dioko. Very technically capable, but very unfun. Uh, why? Because it was just taken to the extreme of wanting to be very good technically. and But they forgot that they were talking about or they were dealing. When I say forgot, um, I say this with a grain of salt. They seem to have forgotten that they were dealing with a planar, and a planar have a uh, planar has a different dynamic uh, way of doing things. And if you lean it out too much, it becomes really too lean, and then starts letting things like its timbre come through too much. Which, again, I repeat, not a not an issue for me, but can be an issue for others. And it then makes things too clinical. It makes things too cold. Things lose their engagement, lose their fun, lose their their organic sense okay the p1 was a kind of the, the the wild card in that aspect because although it was a planar that had been tuned as well in a planar way for some reason it just sounded really good uh, the tonality was perfect it just it was just always an IM that I uh, straight away was attracted to by the way that it sounded. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys a secret. I've got 
a few multiple, well, a few sets of that as well, because I wanted to confirm the QC and to see if it actually maintained that kind of sound across the board in the other sets. And it does. It, it's the QC is perfect, and they all sound the same, and they all stay within very close margins of each other. Very nice. The S12 Pro and the F1 have already adopted that uh, kind of philosophy to make it sound more uh, organic to to make it sound more more comfortable more or more uh, let's say um, well organic like i said uh, we need to tone down certain aspects of the of the tuning which they did and it made them both extremely appealing you know and the the woo it was exactly that the woo the secret of the woo was the f the, the the fact that it was tuned from the get go to be uh, sounding as much as possible like a DD. So some people disliked it because, okay, they, they said it took away that planar characteristic, that planar life. But personally, I think, no, it, 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 it's still there. If you listen carefully, you can still see the, 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 the magic of the planar in the world present. And the heyday has taken that formula and really, really improved upon it. I mean, it sounds so, so correct. If there are hints of, and, and obviously you pick up on these things when you go back and forth and compare. For example, I'll give you an example. Swept Away from Carol Dubok. Sounds amazing on the original Wu. Amazing. Uh, her voice, the bass, it sounds really good. You put the same song on the heyday and it sounds more real. If it's it, it, it's not that it wasn't real there or it wasn't realistic or, or, or faithful or anything no but it sounds so much better that it's like I even question myself how is it possible how how was it done um, forbidden fruit from Candace Springs the voice that that's the the thing about that song the voice wow your your jaw just drops honestly your jaw just drops on the heyday it is so good, so good. So it's like she's there. If, if this one already did it, this one takes it. It's kind of almost I can feel her breath. Okay. Uh, Rashan Peterson, feel good, feels good. Uh, the voice and, and the bass and the mids, the, everything is being perfectly executed. It's It's got a perfect balance. It's just taking things like I said and I'm, I know I'm repeating myself it's just polished things up really well really really well um, another one let's see uh, oh yeah I, uh, eye contact uh, from Jay Beckenstein the the 3d the details of that song are surreal surreal really surreal uh, the heyday is able to surpass the P1 is able to surpass the original. It's able to surpass the F1. It's able to surpass the S12 Pro easily in that song. Easily. Really, really good. Unconditional uh, from Soul Persona. The, the, the voice and the dynamics of the song as well is perhaps one of the few songs, one of the few songs with the, where I will say I prefer it on the original. It's just got a little bit extra slam that I like more the original with that. Another song that I also prefer the original on over the heyday is Sweat from J.K. Riv, the Princess Fre from, from uh, the, the J.K. Riv remix of Princess Frazier's uh, song. But, you know, please keep in mind, this is me personally, and, and this is me kind of trying to find something, okay? Uh, however wrong that might sound. It's me really trying to find something. Um, uh, another one, Endo, Norma, Endo Normalisiert from uh, Cloud Traum, uh, which is a, a very sub bass focused song. Yes, it's a song where you can see that the original had a little bit more, you know, for lack of a better word, balls, but it's not lacking here. No way is it lacking here. Because the way that the tuning has been done here, and since everything has been brought down very, very in a very balanced way, the overall uh, coherence of the whole spectrum is maintained and it's down to of in, to an energy level basically which is exactly the same thing that that uh, is a surprising factor in the P1 Max the, the surprising factor in the P1 Max is 
although you look at the graph and it seems uh, so neutral, so flat that you think, oh, this thing's going to be boring, it's, you, know, you couldn't be further from the from from the truth because everything is so balanced out across the board that as long as you give it power to let the the planar come alive, it sounds tremendous. And the same thing has exa has happened here. Everything is so well balanced out. Everything is so well um, kept in tails with each other. You know, base, mids, highs. That you know, you, you give it power, uh, and it and it's not as power hungry as a P1. Please, please keep that in mind. You give it power, and this thing is just gonna blow your mind away. Um, in terms of matching with, uh, uh, what, you know, the, the the devices I used it with. Um, with the Frankenstein combo, the one using the 4497 and, um, uh, sorry, the 4497 or the 4493, I always get it, yeah, 4493, um, and the, the uh, NX7, um, this combo yeah, has a tendency of being a little bit more dark than, for example, the TK, uh, TK2 or, or the XD05 uh, basic. This one's got a different uh, different uh, op amp running in it, by the way. Um, so, personally, I didn't dislike it in here with the with the NX7 and the AKM, but the the heyday just sh sh it just sounds more more polished. Okay with either these two, or then with the A50S, the top in the desktop A50S, uh, it sounds amazing, amazing, really, really, really good. Um, you guys might be asking, what are, the, what are those two IEMs there, and what are they doing? Well, that, that there is just for me to once again kind of uh, convey how this compares to the previous one. Tensium Oxygen, Oriolosis Abilai, those that know me know that those two are my personal reference single DDs. Um, I've listened to a few other really, really good single DDs. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of listening to The Twilight, uh, but hopefully that will happen soon. Um, or The Illumination um, from, from Moondrop. Uh, but or the, the Turi as well, for that matter, mind you. But out of what I've heard in terms of single EDs and, and uh, a lot of rave was done on the MIM Dark Magician, for me personally, my ears, my music, the Oxygen, uh, and then later joined by the Aureoles, are just perfect. And the thing that I like about both of them is their timbre, their tonality. It's how old school they can be in terms of, you know, it's like you're listening to a really, really good valve amplifier and really good vintage speakers and it just, they just are oh, tremendous. I can understand that some people might think that that day is a little bit bright and it, uh, this and that, okay, maybe it's a result of my 50 years of age and I don't hear as, as high up as I used to when I was younger, but I never, never have ever found the oxygen to be aggressive or overly bright from day one i've always have found the oxygen to have the most amazing tonality the most amazing balance of of the frequencies and uh, again uh, with regards to the bass uh, oh it's bass light it's never found it bass light honestly never i've got two versions of the oxygen uh, an, uh, an older and a more recent one that's the that's the the, the, the older one and they both sound amazing. The difference only being that the newer one has got about 3 dBs more below 40 Hz. Uh, which very few times do I really notice that, that difference. Anyway, all of this talk to say what? All of this talk to basically say that that there is amazing, plays beautifully, is <sighs> tremendous, and this is an upgrade over that which um, I mean you could question is it worth the price increase um, perhaps not perhaps not but tonally whatever voodoo magic they played yeah, on the on the Isabelle I, it, it is s s simply amazing amazing 
and the magic that has been played there is basically the same magic that I can say has been played here with the original Wu Zetian and the Heyday. This is amazing. This plays tremendously. I have absolutely nothing bad to say about the Wu Zetian. This has taken that and just... Wow. And, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Honestly. Definite, definite... Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I usually don't wreck things. I always tell you guys to go out and, and listen to it first and so on and so forth. But uh, in, in this particular, on this particular occasion, I'm just going to tell you, you know, if you do not own a planar and you want a very, very good planar, okay, very, very good planar, and, and, but you're not looking, mind you, let's keep this in mind, you're not looking for that kind of planar reproduction like the Dioko or maybe like the, the Dunotalas, which is just details, 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 and then the fun factor is left home, is left, you know, behind. No, if you're not looking for that, if you want a truly capable IEM of playing to playing music, okay, just get this. That's it. Done. End of story. Honestly, just... Hey day, you 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 good to go. Well, guys, now we got the graphs here for the hey day and for the other IEMs that I also mentioned. Anyway, this is straight away the graph of the hey day, and as you can see, everything is way way smoother than uh, than in the majority of the other planars. Uh, everything stays within a window of so seventy seven to. Uh, 80, uh, 8, 9 dB, 8, 9 dB window, um, and the first comparison obviously makes total sense is with the original, um, and yes, more sub bass on the original, uh, and and this is like it, this extra energy yeah is what I noticed in certain songs with that little extra little bit about of slam and so on and so forth. And then the difference that exists here as well across the uh, a, 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 a good part of the, of the uh, uh, presence area um, is uh, noticeable as well. So you, you do notice that there's a little bit less detail, uh, but it's, it's, it hasn't, uh, contrary to what you would think, oh, it's got less detail, the overall package is going to be, no, it's, it's way more balanced out because the original is more V-shaped, as you can see. And this one is more, uh, more neutral, more, more, more stable, more constant. I mean, the original stayed within a window of uh, 11 dBs roughly, while this one, 11, 12 dBs, while this one is 8, 9 dBs, that, that window of operation, let's put it that way. Also here you see that the original apparently seems to have more, um, let's say, twinklies and sparklies by having more uh, brilliance uh, up top there. But in reality, when you actually listen to it, no, there's no difference whatsoever. And, and uh, the heyday actually comes across uh, even more open, more detailed, and, and, and uh, to a greater part, to a great, to a great uh, the reason to that is to a greater extent the, the fact that you have less uh, energy back here. So the whole thing then just follows through. Uh, the P1 Max, which uh, was and is one of my recs along with the original Buzetian, is this graph uh, that you can see um, uh, there are certain aspects that are kind of similar between the two of them. Um, the, the P1 maintains itself with even, within an even tighter window of operation. We're talking roughly 60 bs, not even, not even, yeah, 60 bs roughly. Okay, um, but I don't know. I, I think maybe here lies possibly the secret for obtaining a, a good balance between uh, the whole frequency spectrum and then still maintaining a little bit of that planar magic and then giving us as well a little bit of that DD magic. Uh, I don't know. I, I think this this could be actually the, the reason. is Instead of wanting to boost things, keep it within a tighter window of operation and the whole sound just sound, comes out way more, more coherent, more in equilibrium. Um, one thing is for sure. The, the, the heyday 
definitely sounds more polished than the original uh, Wuzetian. And when you compare it to other IEMs, uh, or other planar IEMs, mind you, you also notice that there's that polish there. It's present. It, 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 it just does everything with more souplesse, with more finesse. Okay? Compared to, for example, the uh, S12, um, yes, the S12 got, it's got more, more energy in the base and it's noticeable. You can hear it very much. It's fuller. Um, although, a, a good part of the of the up of the mids and, 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 and treble area presence area are very similarly tuned and even past 10k as well um, the fact that it's got this energy here makes the rest sound then a little bit more closed in and please by closed in take that with a grain of salt obviously it's not closed in but I, I think you understand what I'm trying to to understand and similarly but in an opposite way and, and this is actually going to be a surprise now when I show you the graph I, I, I neglected to mention it while I was actually talking about it, but when I show you now the graph, you're going to be very surprised. Uh, where is it? Here we go. No, number 10. This is the graph of the F1. And wouldn't you know, look how, how very similar they are. Uh, and were it not for this little bit extra energy here that it has across the mid base, okay, were it not for this, you would uh, say that the sound. Of the F1 is the sound of uh, of the uh, heyday to a large extent, um, and and this is again this goes to show what I was saying. Uh, not only is that the the neutrality uh, trying to keep things within a tighter window of op of operation, a more neutral tuning, a more uh, without you know excessive uh, excess bass or excess treble. The more neutral approach is definitely. Definitely uh, the, the way to go with regards to uh, to planars. At least this is my perception and my experience and what I'm seeing. And the F1, like I said, when I first listened to it, it surprised me straight away by how good it sounded. And you can see now the reason. Um, it, it, it's, a, let's say, a more basic or more uh, more unpolished approach uh, or of the um, heyday. So there you have it, guys. Um, heyday. A definite, definite uh, success. Uh, well done again, uh, not only to to Tank Zoo but uh, to to HBB for having um, having come through with this. Um, very nicely tuned, very balanced. Nothing, honestly, there is absolutely, in my opinion, nothing that I can truly falter because it it just sounds very, very good. It just sounds really good. It does nothing bad. It, it, it's a very, very well-tuned IEM. Guys, thank you. Uh, questions or anything that you want to know, please feel free to ask. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.